Hi, welcome back and welcome to my review of this DGEN DE16 rechargeable solar radio. Now quite amazingly this radio packs in a lot of features. It's a full FM, AM and shortwave receiver. It has four power options including a crank, solar power, battery and an optional DC adapter. In addition to this it comes in with a built in torch and reading light. Oh, and also it has a siren. Now I was sent this radio but I went onto eBay to find out the cost and I was quite surprised to find it's actually selling for less than £17 delivered here in the UK. That's a pretty good price especially when you think of all these sort of features. Now being a Chinese radio I was actually pleasantly surprised to find that it came with a full set of English instructions and for once they made sense you could actually understand them. On the front of the radio there are quite a few switches but it's not too bad everything's kind of like logically laid out. On the rear of the radio you have the large solar cell for charging a battery and below that the plastic pull out crank. In fact I put no batteries inside the radio at all for testing, I, I used the internal battery throughout. Built in the handle are three very small Cree type leads for a reading light and we'll have a look at that working in a sec. To the side of the radio is a much larger single Cree lead and below that a switch which allows you to switch each individual one on although you can't have the reading light and the torch on at the same time. There are some more LEDs on the front left hand corner. You have a low and high indicator which tells you the charging state of the internal battery. Next to these two lights you have a two colour LED. When this LED shines red it acts as a channel tune indicator. When it turns to green it lets you know that the internal battery is charging. Below these lights is a 57mm internal speaker. There is also a standard 3.5mm headphone jack. Moving across to the right we have the tuning scale. The radio has a total of 7 tuning bands. At the top we have standard FM broadcast 87 to 108 MHz. Below that we have an FM low band which is 64 to 87 MHz which is completely useless here in the UK. Then there is a simple 1 to 10 tuning scale. Next is the medium wave broadcast band 520 to 1710 kHz. Then finally below that is your short wave bands. This range is 4 to 26 MHz and is broken evenly into 4 bands and there are no gaps. Continuing on to the right we have the tuning knob and volume. And I did find this radio actually goes quite loud. Moving down from the volume controls we have an array of switches which tunes all the different bands and gives you different power and charging options. Here you can switch between the built in 4.5 volts DC MIHI battery or three AA batteries or the optional DC transformer which is not supplied. A quick look around the back we have a standard telescopic stainless steel antenna and this rather large solar cell. Below that we have the fold out plastic crank handle. Now I think this is probably going to be the weakest part of the radio because to be honest that hinge pin doesn't look all that strong so you're going to have to go very very careful with this crank handle but it does work. The radio can be powered by conventional AA batteries but it's worth noting that neither the solar nor the crank generator will charge these AA's it only charges the internal battery itself and I think those clever Chinese perhaps missed a trick there. To the side is a 5 volt socket for an external transformer but once again this will only charge the 4.5 volt DC internal battery. So now let's see that crank handle in action. And I was quite surprised I found that I only had to do about a minute and a half of cranking to fully charge the battery and that lasted throughout all of the testing. It's quite easy to do as well, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Certainly a child could do it, but you'd have to be very careful with his handles. I don't think it would stand up to much abuse. I think an easier option would to use the solar panels if you've got a bright day. You can see here as I move to the window, it's getting a fair bit of charge from that panel. I was actually quite surprised. So I think that if you were say maybe camping or something, and you left this out in the sun for a few hours, I reckon you'd be able to fully charge the battery that way. Quite impressed with that. So moving along to the radio's other features, well we've got those three little Cree LED reading lights. Now they are absolutely tiny, but I was quite surprised they did a fair job. I think if you were stuck in a tent in the middle of a field, 
you could actually read by these you might get a little bit of eye strain after a while but I think they certainly do the job now not so impressive is the larger lead torch yeah it is quite bright but it's actually very blue and I found that it's got a very very narrow beam now I think if you was camping and you got up to take a pee well I'm not sure this would actually be bright enough to see you there and back safely okay well enough of the gimmicks let's get on and actually see what this radio sounds like we're going to have a tune around all of the bands but to start with we'll go on the FM now overall I was actually a little disappointed with the FM performance of this radio I mean it's not difficult to get FM right now I did bring in OK some of the stronger FM stations but I found some of the weaker stations it completely overlooked so it's not the most sensitive FM tuner but I'll stop talking now and let you have a listen Joey worried about all the money, money he couldn't easily put to work. Anxiety increased with 20 of the great train robbers going on trial at Buckingham Assizes and getting long sentences. So, I was a little disappointed with the radio Third here in FM mode. However, when we moved get. into medium wave, well, things actually got a lot better. Not only was I able to bring in a lot more stations, the radio actually had quite a nice sound on medium wave. Yeah, sure, it's no Roberts radio, but that little 57mm speaker did a fine job. So overall, I was quite happy with the medium wave performance. The Dale Stain Michael Clark thing, where, you know, Stain's a kind of cartoon, isn't he? He kind of gives you the eyes and he charges it, and it's like panto, really, in a, in a way. But. Not to wound us. So finally moving into the harder to tune shortwave bands once again, I was actually quite pleased with this little radio, I think it did rather well. You see, one of the problems with cheaper shortwave radios is they can actually pick up a lot of medium wave bleed over, but this radio actually had none. Now one final feature that this radio has, which I think if you was away camping somewhere and you had no actual means of power, this could be a godsend, because this radio actually has a 4.5 volt DC outlet socket, which gives you the ability to charge a mobile phone. I suppose if your phone died at night time you'd have to use the actual hand crank, but a better option would be to let the actual solar panel on the radio charge your phone during the day. So overall, for the money, I think this is actually quite a good little radio. Claiming to be a world receiver with all those gimmicky features, I actually thought it'd be a pair of pants when it came down to tuning, especially on the shortwave bands. But in actual fact, it's actually not too bad at all. 
the ability to charge your mobile phone with the solar cell or the hand crank that could be quite useful if you was away camping where you had no source of power I also think this could make probably quite a nice gift for a child maybe 8 to 10 years I think they'd appreciate all of the gimmicky features like the lights and the siren and also it might actually get them into listening to radio you never know but as this radio was so cheap it did get me thinking how cheap can you actually go and actually have a functioning radio and I'm really interested to find out can you get a fully functioning radio for just a few pounds so what I've done I've been onto eBay and I've ordered in a few of these cheap China radios now what I'll be doing in the next few weeks is I'll make an individual video for each one and we'll actually see if they are actually fit for purpose and we'll find out at what price do these so-called radios just become a useless piece of plastic so that'll all be coming up over the next few weeks on the Fred in the Shed channel <laughs> anyway I hope this review of the Dijon radio has been helpful to you if you're thinking of purchasing one so as always I'd just like to say thanks for watching and I'll catch you all soon bye bye now